dear brothers and sisters, and especially, see dear uh, Anil Shastri, the son of great person. <laughs> Indeed, I feel great honor. It's an opportunity to release this, this book. I am one of the admirers of late uh, Lord Mother Shatri. I think several occasions I met, and then after he became Prime Minister, also he met. Uh, a few occasions. When we discuss some serious matters, uh, see, his thinking is really, really, really great. So, big contrast his body and his mind. <laughs> If may I say so. <laughs> then, uh, he also, you see, I think, uh, very compassionate, as far as I sort of observed. Uh, one occasion, a lunch with him, then he was the Prime Minister. And he uh, uh, telling us his own story. One occasion, uh, one pigeon, you see, I think in the room or somewhere. No. And then uh, finally, you see, that pigeon, I think, died. So that moment, I, I remember, I think, vaguely, mm, then he decided, if I'm wrong, you see, a bit correction, but then he decided. Uh, uh, Say they uh, become vegetarian. He told at lunch time like that. So then, uh, as you also mentioned, the Indo-Pakistan war. I think he really, I said, they lead this this nation courageously. And then, meantime, he also is a totally sort of committed problem should solve through dialogue. So he uh, visited Russia. Oh. And then, all of a sudden, we heard he passed away. I myself never expected such a as an unfortunate event. I am quite sure if he live a few more years, I think certainly he can make significant contribution for the nation. There's no question. Very sad. And then, his what you call funeral survey. No, funeral. Funeral. Uh, I came. As you mentioned briefly, I remember, I think your mother, and used to sit beside the, the body and crying, crying, crying. And the Lamar Shastri sort of body, of course, dead body, dark. Black, red, black. Very much moved. So, so the short, so the short period, seeing his dead body reflect the past of his day experiences like that. So I think he truly, I think, represent India. This nation, thousand years, the concept of ahimsa and concept of truth 
and also courage, courage, sorry, courage. I think he represents uh, thousand years of India's supposedly value or tradition. And then I feel, I always feel like a chairman of at the beginning. Uh, uh, after the revolution. I think he very sensitive. Uh, 1954, 55, I stayed a few months in Peking. So during that period, several meetings with Chairman Mozart. I really developed admiration. Then, eventually, such a wonderful, determined person, even that such person is spoiled by power. Your father, I think, not spoiled by power. I think that's very, that's very important. So, such a wonderful person, now no longer with us. But his spirit, I think, will remain in this country. And then also, I think <coughs> we should remember, you see, this so the greatness of these individual heroes. So, so your, this book, I think, very, very helpful is to make known the real value of, firstly, this person, the through that way, the value of this country. I think India, sometimes you see, now last 55, 55 nearly 55 years, uh, India is my home. So, many prime ministers change, and many prime ministers come, and many presidents come, <laughs> and many officials, of course. Uh, so I sort of, because of that, I mean, uh, observed, you said, they even this country. Sometimes I feel a little anxiety. The thousand year old, you are the, I think, very valuable tradition, very valuable tradition, a little bit degenerate. I often telling people, India, Although since got independence now several decades passed, and generally, I think compare neighboring states, this country, very stable, and first of all, religious harmony, still very much alive. And basically, believe non-violence, also quite good. Uh, however, I think we need the spirit, fearless, selfishness, truthful, that kind of spirit during freedom fight. Many leaders, you see, possess rare, possess that kind of quality. That still need, although you got independence, but still because of the population, because of the sort of what's the because of compl complicated nation, so the, uh, the that kind of spirit, selfishness, fearless, and truthful, honest, that I think still very much I think relevant, very important. So I think this book, you see, may teach or many people may get some lesson from this small book. So, so that I want to, to tell you. So you, you yourself and then writers and also people who involved this and also all the publisher, I think you've done a wonderful job. Uh, I appreciate. I think I can express on behalf of millions of admirers of Lal Bhadu Shastri. On behalf of them, I want to thank you.
according to the program, some question answer? Yeah. Oh, then good. Hmm? I love question and answer. <laughs> Although I'm quite sort of lazy to read books. <laughs> <laughs> and also whenever you say, I found a uh, new word in English, I'm quite lazy to open dictionary. <laughs> so when I read some books, so some new word come, then? <laughs> now this time, I try go to read this book. <laughs> Thank you. Now questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my name is Archana Negum, and I'm a bureaucrat. And I wanted to hear from you uh, that one thing that would uh, make our bureaucrats selfless and fearless and intellectually honest, which they are not. So, so, so. I can understand a politician not being so, but a bureaucrat, I can't understand. Firstly, I always consider myself as a one of the seven billion human beings. As a Buddhist monk, in my daily prayer, we always see, think, the entire sentient being. Then, the sentient being, on this planet is we have direct capacity link. And then particularly, seven billion human beings, we have direct link. So, judging global level, degenerate about moral principle is everywhere. So, if this goes continuously, I think the future of humanity will be more difficulties. So therefore, it is global interest or interest for everybody. We have to work hard, uh, uh, tirelessly, to promote moral ethics, moral principle. Now, this nation, thousand years, moral principle, mainly, you see, secular way. It is something very unique. Obviously, out of seven billion, over one billion are actually non-believer. So if we try to promote uh, moral ethics based on religion, then over one billion human beings, non-believer, we can't approach them. So the only the suitable method is thousand-year-old India's tradition, secular. So, in that respect, I think this nation eventually can make example to the rest of the world through secular ethics. Uh, and religious harmony already here. I often telling world, different, different part of the world. Whenever I give talk, I always say, religious harmony is possible. India is living example. All major world religion, religious tradition, live together in this country. Not only recently developed, but over a thousand years. See, so this is an example. So similarly, the secular ethics, I think India, can make significant contribution in order to do that within the country, including leaders <laughs> or politicians or businessmen or any, any, any people, I think should pay more attention and should realize your own traditional value and potential to make significant contribution for a better world. That's, I think, very, very important. Yeah. I feel that. Next. Yes. Your Holiness, I met you 20 years ago in Dharamshala. You wouldn't remember, but I remember. It was a momentous day in my life. I was a young girl then. I've grown old. But you look exactly the same. What is the secret of your eternal youth, spirituality, <laughs> and peace in your mind? <laughs> Not the same. I think if you come close, then some white hair here. <laughs> <laughs> That also, I think, oh, you may already notice this. My knees now create a lot of problems. 
However, of course, uh, I think comparatively, my mind, quite peaceful. Uh -huh. That also, you see, through your tradition, I always is telling India, historically, uh, India is our guru, guru's land. All our knowledge, my own case, since childhood, six, seven year old, I memorize some of the root text, then gradually each word explain, then through dialectical debate way. We study that. So that immense help. Uh, uh, I said, with fuller knowledge about the world of emotion. Once you know whole picture of emotion world, then much easier to tackle. So, so the mainly, I think, peace of mind. That's the created way. Created way. The creates. Created goes to you, <laughs> Indian. More precisely, if may I say so, ancient Indians were our guru, not modern Indian. <laughs> uh, enlightened beings are sent on this earth, uh, as in bodhisattvas, to do special determined work. And many cases, sometimes their life is shortened or their circumstances are too difficult to perform their functions. Why, what is the purpose of that? Or they become very sick and they don't have enough opportunity to perform what they want to perform, what they're sent here to perform. What is the purpose of that sickness and why, why don't they get the support of all the forces to carry on the work that they were sent to do? Oh, that's a mysterious thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You see, different philosophical views Oh, different answer. I think different explanation. So it is quite mysterious. So better to live mysteriously. Okay. <laughs> they, I think both uh, different Hindu tradition as well as Buddhist, Buddhist tradition and Jain tradition, you see, we believe law of causality. And in it, the, the theory of karma also there. Karma means action. Uh, the events or experiences entirely depend on one's own action. Now here, collective karma, individual karma. So someone individually, I think well equipped, but due to collective karma, sometimes it's difficult. So I think there's more, I think the, uh, I think if I remain sort of, or say the mysterious way, then some of the audience may feel uh, is something a secret or something. <laughs> Nothing secret. <laughs> These are thousand year old sort of doctrines or a doctrine or philosophical views. Then simple thing is, those people who believe creator, then up to creator. Then your question should ask creator, not ask me. <laughs> oh. Yes, collective karma. Oh. Sometimes, now for example, Tibetan, very religious minded nation, oh. but suffer quite severe. Severe. So only the explanation is previous collective karma. And of course, the circumstantial conditions. Oh, circumstantial condition also, you see, uh, uh, important. Like that. And that respect, I think Tibetan themselves, I think, very much neglected. Sometimes I jokingly telling people, Tibet generally is a cold country, so is it 
uh, our previous generations is always remember like that. <laughs> They're not looking, watching, surrounding our country. So we always remain like that. So then, all of a sudden, something happened. Then we will not be bad. <laughs> I think we can spend the whole day, sir, with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now.